this will be a complete practical course on pandas and i'm not going to spend time doing theories we are going to be actually doing it practically so take a look at the course outline or what we are going to cover maybe you can pause the video and copy them out and then you can be able to get your head around it but for now hopefully you already have jupyter notebook installed please open jupyter notebook jupyter notebook is part of anaconda installation if you have not gone through python in 10 days you can do uh, the one of Python in 10 days, it specifies how to set up Jupyter Notebook in your system. So what is uh, Pandas? Pandas is a library or a module in Python for data science. In fact, that is the first step for data science for you to learn Pandas. You use Pandas to manage tables, to be able to do calculations, to do aggregation, data cleaning, and a whole lot of things in statistics and data science as a beginner. Other models that we are going to be covering later include NumPy, Matplotlib, Scikit-Learn, SciPy, and so on. So for now, let's go ahead to start with Pandas. All right, so the first thing we want to do is to open a new notebook. So click on New and say Python 3 so that we can open a new notebook. So when you open a new notebook, we can check if Pandas is already installed because Pandas may actually be there or may not be there because it's a module that you need to install. So if it's not installed, then we are going to install it using Conda Navigator. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to say import Pandas as PD. So if I run it at this point, if it runs successfully, it will show me whether it's installed or not. Now, kernel is busy. It takes a few seconds. To, to run this code by importing this module into the pandas module into our workspace. So you can see it runs successfully. So just in case you don't know, if you want to, if the assuming the pandas is not there, you can actually use conda navigator. If you go to anaconda, if you have anaconda installed, go to conda navigator, just open it. So this is how conda navigator opens up. So what we are going to do is to go to uh, environments, Go to environment there you can see installed uh, you can actually check whether pandas is installed by maybe searching for it in the in the side box here you can type pandas and you can see that pandas is installed but if it's not installed you can simply go to not installed search for it check it here and then uh, go ahead to to install it uh, so if you check it as you mean it's not installed, you simply go ahead to install it, right? So that's how Pandas uh, works. I'm going to move on at this point. So if you if you install it, then you are good to go. So I'm going to close Pandas, uh, Pandas uh, sorry, Anaconda Navigator at this point. All right, so now we've imported Pandas. There are two things you need to know because you need to understand the terminologies. The first one is series and the second one is data frame. At this point, I'm going to open my whiteboard because this is a full flight data science class. So let me open my whiteboard so that I can also write something. So at this point, if you have something like A is equal to one, two, three, five. This is called a series and if you have something in a tabular form one two three four five six sorry for the writing do it this way so this in a tabular form is called a data frame right so just have it in mind so pandas works with the two of them but the focus is going to be data frame all right all right, so let's see how to create a data frame. The easiest way to create a data frame is to use a, a Python dictionary. So how, how does a dictionary work? So let's quickly create a dictionary. I'm going to be writing comment here. So a dictionary is created by enclosing the items in, um, in curly braces. So I'm going to say apple and specify column and specify a list of items, let's say, and I put comma and then so I've created a dictionary what we see here is called a dictionary if I run it at this point we have our dictionary if I display it by saying data I have the dictionary as well printed out you can also say print data is also gives uh, a similar result that is fine 
So how does this dictionary have to do with data frame? Well, a data frame can be created directly from a dictionary. And now I want to show you how a data frame looks like. So I'm going to say my fruits or fruits, fruits is equal to pd dot data frame and specify uh, data, right? So if I run it at this time, it assigns it creates a data frame called fruit. How do you view what fruit is? You can say you can just write it fruit and run. You can see that it displays a beautiful data frame. As I mentioned, the data frame is similar to a table. Now I'm going to also say print fruits. Let's see what we also have there. So it, all, it displays it not so beautiful, but that is the difference between displaying values and printing. So what we have is called a key value pair. So what does it mean? In this case, we have Apple. Apple have, uh, is a key and the values are here. And oranges is a key and the values are here. So in this case, the columns are the keys and the values are the rows. Now, each key value item in data corresponds to a column in the resulting data set. So each key value, for instance, this results to a column, this results to a column. In case you can add one more column, you can just say comma and say banana and also specify some items there. So at this point, if I run this, run, 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 data frame is created, so now we have banana. The index of this data frame is giving to us so you can see that we have 0 1 2 3 4 in this case that is the index we don't create we did not create this index uh, index column or the serial number column what this was given to us we can also create our own index if we want so let's take for instance um, let's have <coughs> let's say we have let me just create a new data frame let's say purchases is equal to pd.dataframe. So I'm going to create this data frame directly. I'm going to create it from data. So the data is what I already have. And I can just say index. I'm creating a new index this time is equal to index is equal to uh, I'm just going to write So let's say these are the names of the customers that are buying uh, these fruits. So for Jan, Jan bought apple, banana, and uh, oranges. Anyway, let me just complete it and let's display it. Lily. And how many of them? There are five of them. Dave. And finally, we have Kenny. All right. So what we are doing here is that we are saying that purchases is another data frame. It's made up of this data and it's taking this index items here. So if I run it at this point, it runs correctly and I can easily view the data frame I created. In this case, we have an index column specified right here. So the index column in this case is the names of people that make the purchases. So now we can also locate a customer's order by using their name. So for instance, I could say let me just write a comment to say locate the customer's order by their name. Right, so you simply say we have our data our data frame purchases dot loc is called locate is referred to as locate. So I want to locate the, the, the order made by Rob. So if I say purchases the block Rob is going to give me only the items made by purchases made by Rob. So you can see in this case, Rob bought three apples, four oranges, and four bananas. There is more unloading and extracting data from data frame. We are going to be talking about this later. But let's move on now to some methods, some other methods in creating data frame from other sources. For instance, you might have data as a CSV. For instance, I can go to my system. I have some data as CSV I would like to show you. And then we are going to use this data to create in, a, in CSV to create a data frame. So if I go to data, I have some data set right here. 
So we have this, uh, I don't know, let's try this iris or CSV, this iris or CSV. So how do we read in this file and use it to create a data frame? It's very easy. I'm going to say df is equal to pd equals pd dot read underscore csv. How easy is that? And you specify the location of the uh, csv file, iris dot csv. Let me just make sure that I'm reading the right, uh, I'm, I'm in the right directory. So it's iris dot csv. All right, so I'm going to just execute this line and it runs perfectly. So how do we view this data frame? I can simply say, um, I can simply say um, uh, DF and we can easily see the data frame. The new data frame has been created. You can see it's made up of 150 rows by five columns. All right, so this is a single line we can easily read CSV. CSVs don't have index like our data frame. So in this case, uh, we have uh, this index added uh, in the original data site. This index, index is added in the original data site. All right, so um, to specify that this is actually the index column, you simply say df uh, is equal to, actually, I'm going to just read it Take it, take it from here, and then I'm going to be telling uh, the CSV, the, the the pandas that the first column is the the index column. So I'm going to say index index call equals column zero. So this is it. This is how it goes. So if I view the F, uh, nothing much changes at this point. So it says it's equal to column zero. So so we have one, two, three, four, five, actually, yeah, so. So column zero, I think there is some mix up. So this is actually column zero that has been added by pandas. So in this case, I, I can actually do this. So if we say column zero, we are saying that one of these is actually the index column. All right, so in this case, we are setting the index column to be the first column. The first column in the data frame is actually starting with column 0, column 1, column 2, column 3, all the way to the last column. You'll find that most CSV won't ever have an index column. So usually, you don't have to worry about this. So this is the key thing. You don't need to actually add this index column uh, because actually, it will distort your data and pick out one of the values and use it for index column. Now there's something else I want you to learn, something very important in programming and data science. And what is that? It's called JSON. It's called JSON. If you've not had it before, that is fine. It's called, refers to a JavaScript object notation. So the JavaScript object notation is a portable data format that can be used in any platform at all. So J, 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 uh, JSON, is a data format that displays that specifies data as as a as a key value pairs, a collection of key value pairs. Uh, I don't have a JSON file, but I can quickly go online and get one JSON file. So let me see. All right. So now we have an idea of what data frame is. Let's now talk about data frame operations because in data science you are going to be performing operations. Now, data frame has many, many functions and many operations that you need to know for you to perform analysis. As a beginner, if you're a beginner, you should know these operations uh, that perform simple transformation of your data set or simple data analysis, and also those that provide you with uh, fundamental statistical analysis. So the first thing I want to do is to show you the data we are going to be working with. I think I should have the movie data set at this point. I don't know. I think I should have. Let me see. IMDb movies.csv. Let me see. Others. Okay, so let me see if I can download the IMDb movies data.csv and let's work with it. So let me go to the browser and go to google.com. So let me look for IMDb movie. Let me just write the name of IMDB movie data, the CSV, CSV downloads. 
Right, so I think we should just have it on. Uh, let's see, I come from Kaggle. Uh, okay, so I have IMDb movie data set. It, I think it comes from Kaggle. I actually want to download it easily. So let's go to Kaggle and see if we can easily get this data set. all right so let's let me use the data set i have so if i go back here i should have a sentiment level sentences i have imdb level let me check if i can use this so this doesn't work uh definitely it doesn't work okay we can just use a csv file we have here let's use maybe telescope data the, the Telescope data, so the CSV, that is what we are going to use. All right, so let's get away from here because we can't get this data set easily. So let me just say, let me just get this data set. I'm going to say movies, uh, uh, let's call it uh, data, my data equals, my data, data frame is equal to pd dot three underscore csv and specify the location of the data is in drive d data telescope telescope data dot csv uh, and then i'm going to run this and see if we get this data and i'm going to just check my data underscore df and let's see all right so this is what we have uh okay so let's say we have this we've already read in the csv to view the data we can actually view the first five rows by saying my data dot dot hex is going to give us the first five rows of this data i'm going to run it my data df dot hex so that is the name of the data set sorry for the typo so my data df of head gives us the first five rows of this data set. And also in the same way, you can also use my data df dot tail. Of course, if you use head, then you can also use tail. That gives you the last five rows. You can see 19,000, uh, 19,020, I think so. Actually, you can give as exactly the name, the number of items you want. You can specify it right here. You can want two last items. You can also specify 
for the first three items in the data set, you can specify it right here as well. Maybe I'm going to just increase the font size a bit. All right. All right, so typically when we load data set, we like to see the, 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 the data, maybe the first few rows or the first last rows, the, 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 the last uh, few rows. Now I want to get information about this data set. To get information about this data set, I'm going to just say my data df.info. So if I say my data.df.info is going to give us the information about this data set. So you have all the columns, the data types of this column, their floats, and the number of items we have here, 19020. All right, um, so info provides essential details about your data set. So in this case, it gives us the rows and the columns, uh, the number of the rows, the number of the columns, the values, or the data, uh, the data types of the values. Another thing you can do is to say df.shape. Sorry, my data df.shape. So it's going to tell you the give you the details of the data set. Sorry, the shape is not callable. So let's take out the brackets and let's run it. So it tells us the number of rows is 19020 and the number of columns they are 11 columns. Now let's say we have certain duplicate values in this data set. So let's say we have certain duplicate values in this data set. To remove the duplicate values and the, the resulting data set, we can place it in a temporary data set. So to remove the duplicate values, I'm going to say uh, my data df dot so okay my data df dot so let's see so to so what we are going to do is to check whether they are duplicates so we are going to create a new data set called temp df and say my data set uh my data df dot append so you simply append it to itself uh, my data df df so just append it and after appending it we are going to check the shape of the new data set i'm going to say temp df dot shape so if the shape is not exactly like the original data set then it means that there are there seems to be let me see so how temp df is equal to my data df that append we have this okay so we have exactly twice the original data set, so that is fine. So using append, we return a copy, uh, a copy without affecting the original data frame, and we are capturing this copy in time. So we aren't working with the real data set. So notice that the shape quickly proves that our data our data rows have actually doubled. So this is double the number of rows. Now we can try to drop the duplicate. Now, in the time data set, it has duplicates, and to drop them, you simply say temp df is equal to temp underscore df dot drop dot duplicates. So this is what you simply do to drop duplicates, and in this case, it's going to drop all the duplicate data from the temp df. So I'm going to run it at this point. Function has no attribute duplicate. So, time df dot drop underscore duplicate. That is what you do. Run. So, if I look at time df to shape at this point, you'll see that time df is exactly the original, like the original data set. So, actually, we have uh, some, we actually lost. I think we lost a few rows because um, so there are some actually uh, some duplicate data site data in the original data so we, we they have actually been removed so before now we have 18,000 uh, let's see before we have 19,020 now it's have 18,905 so there are actually some duplicate data that was dropped so to drop duplicate data from the original data set because we have my data df 
my data df dot shape. Uh, let's see. So this is what we have. And to drop duplicate data, in case if there is any, after dropping duplicate data, then we check how many of the data rows remain. So I'm going to say my data df uh, dots my data df uh, df new. Let's call it df new is equal to my data df dot drop underscore duplicates. All right, so my data df new now will be the original, the new data set. So if I check what is in there, my data df new dot shape. So we we'll see that some of the data has gone. So now we have uh, it, uh, about 18,905 data uh, rows left at this point. So du duplicates has been dropped. All right, so um, another thing you can do is so we can drop duplicates in place without having to create a new data set. So if I go to my data DF to drop duplicates, and let's say I paste it right here, I can simply specify in place this in place is equal to true so what is going to happen is it's going to drop duplicate and modify the original data set all right another important argument for drop duplicate is something called keep so keep I uh, have options like first last or false false drop all the duplicate uh, last drop the last one uh, and and at last keeps the last duplicate and first keeps the first one. I don't think I'll, that, I'll demonstrate this at this point. So let's go to some, some other concept you need to know about. That concept is called something called cleanup. So that is something called cleanup. So let's take for instance, we have my data DF dot columns, just to view the columns in this data site. You can see the columns and you can see all the columns in this data site. All right, so now not only do these columns come handy if you want to see all the columns, but it also allows you to simply copy and paste. And it's also useful if you need to understand why you get some errors when you select data columns. So if you want to rename the columns, you can actually uh, rename the columns. But in this case, I'm going to I'm not going to do it. But I'm just going to show you the syntax. You can see my data df dot rename and you specify the columns you want to rename and say columns equals and then specify the columns you want to rename or the, 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 the new columns you want to use so this time I can rename it by removing all the F because I have F's here so maybe I'll just do it at once so let me copy this the, uh, the original columns I have here let me just copy them just copy them so at this point I'm going to take out all the F so that the columns can have a meaningful name so I'm going to just say paste it right here so I'm going to remove all the F so that this will be because F tends to indicate that they are floating point numbers all right so let, let's try to rename uh, one of the columns let's say we want to rename this F length into length we can just say my data df dot rename and specify the columns you want to rename so this the columns you want to rename is should be this so now we specify the column to the f length f length gat and you put a column and specify the new column gat GTH. and at this point I want to rename it in place all right so let me run it at this point so if I view my data DF at this point my data uh, DF dot columns or let's just use the page so we'll see that the first column will now be a name of length you can see that this is length at this time we've renamed it from F length to length right and that is fine and we used in place to be true great but what if we want to rename everything to lowercase 
Uh, one thing we can do is to create a site, an array of columns. For instance, I can just copy this so that I can reuse it. So let me just copy this at this point. Let me copy this and just say, let me say columns. Um, let's say, can say, uh, sorry, can say my data underscore df the columns is equal to you simply assign it a new set of columns so in this case just take out the f so that let's have a new set of columns without the f so let's just take out all the f from there and after we are going to check if it actually renamed them all right so i'm going to run it at this point so if i now check my data df, my data df dot columns, or let's just say that hey, and let's see if the columns were actually renamed. So you can see the columns are actually renamed and the f's have been removed. All right, but this is much work to be typing out everything uh, like that. So, but there's nothing we can do sometimes. But one thing we can do is let's say we want to rename all the columns to lowercase. Can say my data df. This time, I want to change the columns to lowercase. The columns are uh, columns equals. And this time, we are going to say call the lower for call in my data df. So what's going to happen at this point is going to execute call the lower and change all the columns to lowercase. So if I run this, hopefully um, it says Panda doesn't allow columns to be created via new attribute entry point, da, 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 da. So these are warning. All right, so how to handle this? You actually will say, um, let's say, cost is equal to uh, C dot lower, okay, uh, for, for, in calls. I think it's going to work this way. I'm going to try to run it at this point. Let's run. Invalid syntax. So I think uh, I should enclose this in some kind of uh, square brackets. Let's try it out this way and see what we have. All right. So let's run it again. Okay. Perfect. So, so what we can now do at this point, we can now say, uh, and now say if I view what calls is, you can see that it's only it's just lowercase. You can see. So I can say my data df dot columns dot columns equals calls. I hope it's going to work at this time. Let's see. All right. So if I say my data df my data df dot head, let me take only the first three. You can see that the columns have been renamed to lowercase. So this is how to rename items to lowercase. All right, so the question now is how do we work with missing values? In data science, missing values are a problem. So let me write a comment here that says working How do we work with missing values? So in data analysis, you may likely meet encounter missing values, all right? So what do you do? One thing you can do is to actually either replace all these missing, val missing values or you get rid of the records that contain missing values. So in our case, I don't know if there is any missing values, but one thing I can do to check, I can say my data df dot is null. So just to check uh, if there are any missing values, I'm going to just run it. So we can see many, many, many uh, missing values um, there. So we can have, let's see. Okay, dot is null is giving, giving us false. So meaning that there are no missing values uh, there. Let's see, I think so. Just, I'm just thinking so, I don't know. However, if there are some missing values, we can try to get them by saying, my data df dot is null 
uh, the sum. So let's see if there's we have some missing values. So we have there are no missing values actually. There are zero missing values. However, if you want to remove missing values, you are going to say my data dot uh, drop na. So my data ds drop na. So this is going to drop the missing values uh, from the data set. So it drops the missing values and returns the original data set. All right. All right. So this is how to handle missing values from this. This operation will delete the rows entirely where at least a single value in the data frame is missing without altering the original values. Again, you can also say in place here, in place equal to true, so it's going to overwrite the, the, the original data set. And you can also specify the axis to be true. The axis is either you are dropping the columns or you are dropping the rows. All right, so, so let's learn about how to get a bit more information about our data set. So I'm going to say my data dot, my data df dot, dot describe. That's another way to get information about your data set. Uh, I hope it works, describe. I think this also works. It gives us so much details about our data set. In this case, it's giving us all the columns, it's giving us the count, the mean, the standard deviation, the the, 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 the minimum value in the in the list of in that column, 25 percentile, 50, 75, uh, maximum values and stuff like that. So this is what you get when you use describe. You can actually also describe only a single column. In this case, you can specify the uh, specify the column you want to describe. So we have to, you want to describe length at this point. So I'm going to just run it. So it gives us the result for only uh, the values for description for length. So if you want to find relationship between the, uh, the values, let's say you want to find is there a relationship between the length and the width, the relationship between the length and the size, you can use something called CORR, that is correlation in data science, correlation is very important. So I can say my data df dot core is going to give us if there is any correlation between the values, so in this case, it's giving us all the all the columns here, all the rows here. So relationship between length and length, of course, length is the same as length, so it's one. So of course, correlation value goes from zero to one. What of length and width? Length and width has a correlation of zero point seven seven. So as length is increasing, width is also increasing. So if you have, we have this. Uh, ASMI, I don't know what that means, related to length, we have minus 0 0.3, meaning that there is no correlation between the two, and, or there is a negative correlation between the two. As one is going up, the other one is going down. All right, so this is about correlation. So if you look, you can see the diagonal is one, because that's correlation between, uh, the, between the variable with itself. So that's about Correlation. Let's now talk about something you uh, you would like to know about, and that is called data frame slicing, selecting, and extracting. How do you select subsite of your data of your data frame? So let me just add a a, a a comment. So we focus on some basic summary of data. Now we've learned about column extraction using uh, square brackets. We've imputed no values. We've removed not the missing values. But how do we extract a uh, data set, all right? Now, one thing you already know, let me start with something you already know. You already know that you can extract one single column by saying my data df and specify a single column, for instance, width, width. This will extract a single column. So to select a single column, you can say my data df. Now you need to use double, uh, you need to use double uh, two, two uh, uh, square brackets, and you can say weeks. And I'm going to run 